height because of his excellence and his attitude. I was talking recently with a friend of mine and we were talking about the hospitality industry. And he shared with me, he said, you know, I built my house off of the hospitality industry. So I said, explain what you mean. He said, well, well I served as a waiter and maitre d' and so on. And he said, routinely, persons would, who came in, they would give him, you know, $3,000 or $5,000 as a tip. And so I asked him, I said, well, you know, what, what do you think about that? He said, because I served with excellence and I had a good attitude. People were not paying for a meal. They were paying for excellence and attitude. One of the good things about the Bahamas that we have slipped in is our excellence and our attitude. You know, we as a hospitality nation, we have been renowned for friendliness and excellence in service. But I think in many ways, we have slipped. So today, um, I'm here to remind you that these power twins are still one of the keys to our personal and collective success. So let's remember Daniel and continue to serve and excellent. Some people try to combine excellence and arrogance. But you need excellence with a good attitude. And once we operate in that both personally, professionally, and collectively as a country, it will serve us better and we will regain or, or resume our march to higher heights. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads together. Father God, we just thank you for this wonderful day that we have before us. And Lord, we thank you that as usual, we gather here to conduct the business of the country. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your spirit to direct us so that the decisions we make and the words we speak would be in line with your will for our country. And God, we thank you and we ask that you would continue to bless every member of this house. Father, we pray that together we would be reminded and we would walk in excellence and with the best attitude going forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father, all of you, thy name, thy kingdom come, our will be done, 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 our will Desmond Bannister, Renwood Wells, Jeffrey Lloyd, Dr. Green Fan, Marvin Bain, Frankie Campbell, Newfield Dragula, Michael Pintard, Darren Henfield, Ramal Ferreira, Manisha Rowe, Renville Rowe, Ellsworth Johnson, Philip Davis, Vaughn Miller, Patricia Parker Edson, Aaron Lewis, Carlton Bolag, James Alden, Travis Robinson, Adrian Gibson, Donald Saunders, Curtis McElfine, Hank Johnson, Mark Hume, Michael Pope, Miriam Reckitt Emanuel, Lee Sigmund, Ruben Ramming, Ricky Matthew, Shannon Dawn Cartwright, Chanel Ferguson, Leonard Hannah Martin, Pike Bell Ford, Chester Cooper. Good morning, honorable members. <clears throat> honorable members, I have in my hand a copy of a newly published book 
that I would recommend to all of us and to the Bahamian public. If you can zoom in on it, it's a, a, a book about the biography of the Honorable James Oswald Ingram. It's written by Diane Darkoots, and there's a foreword by the Reverend Father James Moultrie, PhD. If you can zoom in on, on it for me. Of course, we all know that the Honorable James Oswald Ingram is a predecessor in the office of the Speaker of this Honorable House. And my understanding now is that he's not doing so well medically. So as we, as we uh, read this book, we can also offer up some prayers for him, and we can make a larger contribution than the $10 price for the book to assist in any which way we can. I would highly recommend it to all citizens of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Thank you. Introduction and swearing in of new members. Laying of documents by ministers. Thank the Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Bamboo Town. Uh, we do have some laying of documents with the Speaker. Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Kalani. I have no fingers on too. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Speak, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. Emerging Powers COVID-19 Pandemic Number 10, Amendment Order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Yes, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. Emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic number 11, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. Emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic number 11, amendment order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave lay on the table of house a copy of the following. Emergency powers, COVID-19 pandemic, number 12, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave lay on the table of house a copy of the following. The Bahamas registered Stock Directions 2020, Bahamas Registered Stocks Number 12, 2023, 2025, 2027, 2030, 2040, and 2050. Order that the documents be brought up. That the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Chair recognizes the honorable member for Bamboo Town. Um, there are no further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, honorable member. Statements and communications by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Kalani.
Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to do a two communications today. I wish to provide the House and the country with a general update on the nation's ongoing efforts to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. Recently, I announced restrictive measures for mainland eczema and mainland elutra due to exponential increases in new COVID cases on those islands. As of yesterday, the 17th of November, there were a total of 99 confirmed cases of COVID-19 on Exuma and on Elutra, a total of 143 confirmed cases. A team from the Ministry of Health made up of members of the contact tracing team and the surveillance unit is currently on the ground in Exuma to assess the COVID-19 situation. Health officials reported that from the preliminary analysis of the map of cases, the spread is occurring throughout Exuma. And from the interviews conducted in the community by the health team, some people are still having gatherings and residents believe this is largely contributing to the spread of COVID-19 on eczema. Speaker, I want to repeat that, that it's believed that the problems that we face in eczema are related to gatherings or common language, partying and having a great time. A health team is scheduled to return to Elutra next week to complete a follow-up assessment and to determine the impact of the recently imposed restrictive measures on that island. On Grand Bahama, health officials report that the recent increase in cases on the island is due to a recent outbreak at an industrial company. The industrial site has been closed and a meeting is expected to be held this week with the industrial group and their subcontractors to review the analysis of the outbreak at that site. All positive cases from that site remain in quarantine or in isolation. Health officials continue to closely monitor Exuma, Elutra, and Grand Bahama. The Ministry of Health will provide a further update at its press briefing. I wish to remind every family island and key, especially those not under curfew, to continue to abide by health protocols, including wearing a mask, adhering to physical distancing, and washing hands regularly. I also ask Mr. Speaker, I beg, please, to the Bahamian populace, avoid all large gatherings and social events. As we have seen on other islands and as domestic and international tourists begin to travel to more family islands, there's a greater likelihood of the spread of this deadly virus. And to avoid restrictive measures, I ask every Bahamian, no matter which island, settlement, or community you live in, to please follow the well-known health care measures. Wearing a mask is a life-saving measure, just as are antibiotics and medicine for other health challenges and diseases. No responsible person would tell someone with high 
blood pressure, diabetes, or an infection, not to take their medicine and not to take it in a timely manner. Just like these medicines, the public health measures help to prevent infections and save lives. Mr. Speaker, we wear seat belts while driving and flying for our protection. We should also wear masks and avoid large social gatherings to protect our own health and the health of others. Let me briefly clarify two frequently asked questions in the public domain. Church services in the sanctuary are permitted during the week on New Providence and Abaco in accordance with the guidelines established by the Bahamas Christian Council. I, speak, I think it's important for me to clarify that because there are some who believe that church services are limited to only Saturday and Sunday. That is not the case. Memorial services and services in funeral parlors are not permitted on New Providence or Abaco. And Mr. Speaker, most of the world, including popular tourist destinations, have put in place extensive protocols for tourists and for returning residents and citizens who have traveled overseas. The Bahamas is no different. We are following various international protocols and adjusting them as necessary. As we are set to receive an increase in international visitors next month, I wish to repeat that everyone traveling into the Bahamas from the U.S. or any other destination must have a valid negative COVID-19 RT-PCR test. And this test must be taken no more than five days from the day of travel. Mr. Speaker, are getting many, many reports of Bahamians having a COVID PCR test taken in the Bahamas prior to their travel overseas and then attempting to use those results for their travel health visa and return here to the Bahamas. I wish to be very clear and remind Bahamians and residents traveling overseas that no COVID-19 RT-PCR test taken in the Bahamas is valid for a travel health visa in order to return to the Bahamas. Mr. Speaker, everyone, including citizens, residents, and visitors entering the Bahamas must also have the international travel health visa. These new travel and entry protocols have now gone into effect. These create a two-pronged approach to fight COVID-19, inclusive of health screening survey and testing. For anyone, including citizens, residents, and visitors, staying longer than four nights and five days in the country, a rapid antigen test must be administered on the fifth day of their arrival in the Bahamas. There are places to obtain these tests throughout the Bahamas. Where there are no private medical facilities, government clinics may be used. In addition to these public health measures, the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Tourism have launched a daily online health screening survey. And this survey is provided through the travel.gov.bs website. All individuals, including citizens, residents, and visitors traveling into the Bahamas will be required to complete this short survey online each day for approximately 14 days. The speaker, as most of our guests leave our shores within five days, those individuals would only be required to complete 
this survey, or what we would call a risk analysis survey, for five days. Only those who are beyond five days, the 14 would be required to extend it to 14 days. And that is because, Mr. Speaker, the incubation period of this virus is 14 days, and most individuals tend to zero convert between the fifth and seventh day. But that does not exclude an individual from zero converting on the tenth or eleventh day, and hence the incubation period. The health screening survey, or as we would call the risk analysis, is an important part of preventing the spread of COVID-19 and ensuring that the Bahamas is safe for all to enjoy. Participation in this survey is mandatory. Those who fail to comply will be subject to penalties. But I want to repeat again, those especially for the Ministry of Tourism, that as most of our visitors leave our shores within five days, they are only required to complete the risk analysis during their stay, which is four or five days respectively. Citizens, residents, and visitors who do not complete the survey will be fined $100 per day or one week imprisonment. The health survey will enable the further monitoring of and response to any possible instances of COVID-19. Ministry of Health will also be studying the results of the health survey to significantly test and evaluate the health protocols. Mr. Speaker, very soon, a domestic travel health visa will also be implemented for travel from New Providence, Grand Bahama, Abaco, mainland Exuma, mainland Elutra, and Bimini to other islands in the country. Mr. Speaker, let me explain so others, many can understand. If an individual is traveling from what we would call a sterile environment, example, Nagua, who has no case of COVID, Nagona, Auckland, Crooked Island, Ragged Island, Rumpke, San Salvador, individuals traveling from those areas which are considered sterile would not need um, such a visa. Um, if, on the other hand, when they land into the infected areas, New Providence, Grand Bahama, Elutra, Exuma, etc., in order to leave those areas, you would be required to have a travel visa. Because that, that would allow us, Mr. Speaker, to monitor the situation so as to minimize, if not remove, the possibility of them taking back a virus into a sterile area. But sterile to sterile, no problem to transportation. So, Mr. Speaker, this does not apply to travel between Exuma and its keys, Lutra and its surrounding islands. The domestic health visa will replace the 14-day quarantine requirement for those traveling from New Providence. The question has been asked by members of the press repeatedly about the quarantine in the family islands. Once the domestic travel visa is in place, then the domestic, then the quarantine will fall away, being replaced by the rapid, um, by the um, questionnaire, risk assessment analysis daily, and the um, five-day rapid test and um, there'd be no need for a quarantine. And as I said early, earlier, that is expected to be implemented um, very soon. And I know the press would like a day, but I would not want to give a day that I cannot commit, nor adhere to, I would say very soon, with capital letters. The domestic travel health visa, like the international travel health visa will include the same two-pronged approach to fight COVID-19, inclusive of the daily health screening survey and the rapid 
antigen testing on the fifth day, as I've just spoken about. And this domestic travel health visa must be presented to air and sea carrier operators before boarding an aircraft or marine vessel. If this requirement is breached or violated, the carrier or owner of the vessel is subject to a fine of $2,000 for every passenger traveling without the domestic travel health visa. Speaker, that is important because if these protocols are violated and individuals travel to sterile environments without the necessary protocol, then yes, they may feel that they're just catching a ride, um, but they would run the risk of introducing the virus in those areas. And it's essential that we do all that we possibly can to ensure that those sterile areas are remain, remain sterile and to ensure that we protect our archipelagic nation. The passenger, Mr. Speaker, will also be subject to a fine of $1,000. I wish also to note that for the time being, a negative COVID PCR test is required only for travel from New Providence, Grand Bahama, and Exuma. Mr. Speaker, we are very fortunate here in the Bahamas. Our public health measures have worked and are working. We have brought the virus numbers down in the pandemic's second wave. However, across North America and Europe, cases are surging at a record pace. Some are saying that coming winter, that the coming winter will be a disaster, will be a dark winter, and some are even saying that it will be hell. Hospitalizations are so much on the rise that in some jurisdictions, they've run out of hospital beds. And others are transporting patients from one state to another in order to seek medical care. And others are even advising patients that the hospital beds and the hospital have reached capacity and therefore they should stay home and manage themselves because the hospitals cannot accommodate them. Mr. Speaker, again, we are fortunate in that our numbers within the hospitals are decreasing in our medical personnel and our surveillance team, health personnel in general, are doing an excellent job. And um, we will not... Excellent. We would not like to meet or reach that level of chaos within our society. Large field hospitals have been erected to take care of the overwhelmingly number of sick patients. Deaths, Mr. Speaker, have increased too. In some jurisdictions that did not or refused to require masks are now mandating mask wearing. Something the Bahamas did at the beginning of this pandemic. So, Mr. Speaker, the Bahamas, under the advice of its medical team, were in the forefront of this pandemic and got out aggressively, quickly, and decisively. And hence, we can see the results that we're seeing, and we watch others on a meltdown. Countries that did not generally, that did generally well in the first wave including the developed world, are now experiencing an alarming increase in cases. In response to the surge in the Americas and Europe, countries and jurisdictions are implementing other aggressive restrictions. These range from curfews and selective closures all the way to full national lockdown for a period of many weeks. What is deeply concerning is that public health experts expect conditions to worsen as it gets colder 
and more people are indoors. I think I cannot stress enough that as many Bahamians as possible should receive the flu vaccine to continue to protect themselves. So outside of that, you can be bombarded by not only the flu virus, but the COVID virus. In combination, can be even more detrimental and place additional stress and strain on your health facilities. And these flu vaccines are offered free and many of the um, various different constituencies are likewise offering flu vaccines. And I would encourage as many as possible to please obtain the flu vaccine. It is important that as a people, we watch responsible and fact-driven news and keep informed as to what is happening globally. The Bahamas, Mr. Speaker, again, is doing extremely well in its pandemic response. And we should be very grateful for this. We have battled through the waves, learning what works and learning what does not work. We have refined our policies to allow for as much opening up as possible. And when the conditions call for tightening, we do so, but only as much as is necessary. Bahamians should be proud of their country, of our health experts, and of our medical personnel. We should be proud, Mr. Speaker, that this little Bahamas is fighting through the worst global public health crisis in 100 years. Mr. Speaker, as a result of the extraordinary spike in cases in North America and Europe and the ongoing challenges in the Americas as a whole, as Prime Minister, I advise all Bahamians not to travel outside of the country at this time unless for an emergency. Mr. Speaker, I want to repeat that. I advise all Bahamians do not travel out of our country at this particular time unless absolutely necessary. There are several reasons why I offer this advice. The record number of cases in, no in the northern countries means there is significant viral transmission there. Traveling to a COVID hotspot that cause you to catch it. Additionally, as I mentioned, many countries have overwhelmed hospital systems. If you get in a foreign country that is overwhelmed by COVID-19, it might be very difficult to get medical treatment. Additionally, as we saw in the first wave, when viral cases surge, countries may quickly change their travel policies. Borders could be shut suddenly with no set time as to when they may reopen. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, the aim is traveling abroad. If international borders are shut suddenly, they can find themselves in a situation where they are trapped and cannot return. Imagine if someone decides to take a four-day pleasure trip and only carry enough money for that time. Then all of a sudden, the country closes its borders for months. How would they take care of themselves? How would they afford food and accommodation? And when would they be able to come home? It is exceptionally risky to leave the Bahamas at this time. And therefore, I beg, I beg and I plead with all Bahamians to stay home, 
unless it is absolutely necessary to travel overseas. Walmarts can work, can wait. I know, Mr. Speaker, there's COVID fatigue. We are all undergoing COVID fatigue. I know that many people want a break. If someone needs to take a break, they might consider going to one of our family islands where travel is permitted following the public health guidelines. I ask Bahamians to spend that money in the Bahamas while Bahamian businesses, with Bahamian businesses that employ Bahamians. They will have a good time and will help our economy. We should be careful and sensible when it comes to where we travel. We could have a very difficult third wave if we are lax in our behavior and in our travels. If you have to go overseas because of an emergency, please wear a mask, maintain physical distancing, avoid large gatherings, and wash your hands thoroughly and often. Mr. Speaker, I want to remind the human that we were one of the first countries to enter the second wave understand the reason that we should be one of the first to come out of the second wave. But our second wave, Mr. Speaker, people don't like to hear facts. Our second wave is as a result of 4,224 Bahamians traveling to our northern neighbors that were considered hotspots. Many subsequently became infected and brought it home. The data and the facts would reveal that when our borders were open, less than 1% of the infections that we had experienced during this time were as a result of our guests or tourists. Over 99% of the infections were as a result of us. Mr. Speaker, I remind individuals because it's even more important the surge that we see and the level that we see in our northern neighbors is now worse than we saw when we entered the first wave. And therefore, there's an even greater chance of individuals becoming infected. And thus, they can throw us in a third wave which can be worse than what we've seen in a second wave. And therefore, our destiny is determined, and our future is determined by them. That simple trip abroad into what I would call a COVID Coliseum can result in bringing the virus back, subsequently endangering the opening of our hotels, who are making arrangements open, and thus placing thousands of Bahamians at risk and not being able to commence their employment. You would place straw vendors at risk, and they too would not be able to commence their skills and their employment. Our tour buses would likewise, likewise not be able to commence their employment. That extends to taxi drivers, the jet ski operators, and the speaker. Lastly, it extends to yourself and your family. So what that simple trip can do is result in the commencement of a third wave Alter the plans of our hotels opening, alter the plans of our economy starting, and alter the plans of our employment, of our straw vendors, jet ski operators, etc. So, Mr. Speaker, I ask again, vehemence, that 
the record speak for itself that we travel only if absolutely necessary. And if we were to do that, then our hotels and other entities would be able to open with great comfort and safety. And if we continue to follow the mitigation protocol by the Ministry of Health, we can possibly have a wonderful Christmas. In the absence of that, Mr. Speaker, I can only say that I would not like to witness a third wave because of the impact it can have on our health system. And I don't think any member in this parliament outside of medical professionals can basically visualize the impact of a collapsed healthcare system and an overburdened or overworked health staff. The speaker, the same what I spoke briefly about, it also applies to social gatherings and partying. They too can force us into a third wave. And therefore, we must be very careful with our behavior. I know that is difficult because by nature, we are social animals. That's our nature. And therefore, to change one culture overnight is extremely difficult. But sometimes you must ask individuals to be disciplined, if even just for one month. Just that brief discipline can save an entire nation, the future of your nation, and your economy. Ms. Speaker, we are progressing through the pandemic. There's increased hope that medical innovations are on the way to bring it to an end. In recent weeks, there were two encouraging announcements in the United States regarding vaccine candidates. Both vaccines demonstrated high levels of success in phase three trials. There is hope that medical frontline workers in the US may begin to be vaccinated as soon as next month. While we all should be pleased with this success, we must be very realistic with our timeline. It will take time before newly approved vaccines in the developed world become available in the developing world. We are working with the World Health Organization and others to secure vaccines for the Bahamas. And Mr. Speaker, Minister of Health and this team of health professionals are aggressively working on a national plan so that we would be prepared whenever the vaccine is available for the Bahamas, that they would have been proactive and ready to commence the process. And I want to say to Bahamians, there are a lot of rumors about vaccines, etc. But be assured that whenever the vaccine is introduced into the Bahamas, I most certainly will be one of the first to receive the vaccine. Until that time, Mr. Speaker, we must keep up with our public health measures of mask wearing, physical distancing, and hand washing sanitizing. Mr. Speaker, I hear the noise in the background, but I would hope to God that those individuals are wearing their masks. These measures work, Mr. Speaker. They are saving lives. The virus has caused restrictions and disruptions all over the world. The virus has slowed economic activity at different times and to different degrees all over the world. Despite the difficulty 
of the time, I am confident that the Bahamas will overcome. Most of our people largely comply with the public health measures, and I thank them for, the following, for following the public health measures. Our people, Mr. Speaker, are very resilient. Our people are hardworking. And our people will get through this together. Yes, yes. The COVID-19 pandemic has been difficult, but it has not broken our spirit no. to thrive and to prosper. The truth is that the Bahamas is doing much better than many countries in the world. It is truly sad and deeply unfortunate that some people aggressively opposed the most recent emergency orders passed in the House. The measures in the orders, which are similar to measures throughout the world, which helped to significantly bring down the number of cases and helped to save lives. On another occasion, Mr. Speaker, I will have much more to say to those who oppose the extension of the emergency orders. Mr. Speaker, with vaccines emerging, there is light and hope on the horizon. Bahamians should remain focused and stay positive in their outlook. They should ignore those who are endlessly and predict predictably negative and those who always complain about the Bahamas or root for failure. Instead, let us celebrate those who are helping our country to get through this unprecedented time. The Bahamas is a great little country with extraordinary people, and many Bahamians are impressed at how our doctors, our nurses, our medical professionals have cared for the sick. And Mr. Speaker, I am proud, I am proud to say I belong to that noble profession of physicians. Yeah. Many are impressed with how our businesses have helped enforce the public health measures. I am impressed with the NGOs who partnered with the government-funded feeding program to provide food for tens of thousands of Bahamians in need due to economic fallout of the pandemic and who are now focusing strictly on the most vulnerable in our communities. To date, the government of the Bahamas has spent approximately $18 million on the food assistance for our people. Mr. Speaker, I only want to note, as I watch the international news, you would see miles and miles of cars lined up at various different states, lining up for food assistance programs. So the Bahamas is not unique in assisting its, its um, citizens. It's happening in first world countries. For those countries, there are miles and miles of individuals lining up. So I want to thank the task force who have done an excellent job and the Ministry of Social Service led by Minister Campy, um, Frankie Campbell and I thank them for the excellent job they've done in terms of delivering food and assisting our people. I am impressed, Mr. Speaker, with the new small business owners who are turning crisis into opportunity and hope for the future. We have to fight for our future together. We will all, we will give all, we will, all, we will give all a better future. Our future will be better once we keep working together in a spirit of love and a spirit of love. Speaker, may God continue to bless each and every one of us. And may God continue to bless the Commonwealth of Farmers. Thank you. Honorable Member, order that the communications be brought.
order that the communication to lie on the table. Further statements and communications by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Kalani. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, as members would be aware, this honorable house approved the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2018, which checks out the parameters for the development and presentation of an annual fiscal strategy report, FSR. The FSR provides the medium-term macro-fiscal framework that underpins Anyhow, 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 Rashad from Tribune, you're a good man. You see, you're a good man. You're a good man. The, ho the house records would, would, would reflect that the Prime Minister said Rashad from the Tribune is a good man. All right, remember. The FSR, Mr. Speaker, Fiscal Strategy Report provides a medium term macro fiscal framework that underpins and informs the preparation of the government's annual budgets. It sets out the government's strategic priorities with respect to revenue collection, spending, and financing over the medium term horizon. Since the release of the inaugural FSR in 2018, the government has continued to make good on its statutory commitment to fiscal transparency and accountability. We initiated quarterly budget performance reporting and have never missed a cycle since inception. In keeping with our commitment and obligations, I rise to share the status of the 2020 Fiscal Strategy Report, which the government is required to present to the House of Assembly by the third Wednesday in November. Mr. Speaker, given the fluid nature of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and its economic impact, my cabinet and I have agreed that the prudent thing to do is to defer final deliberations and release the FSR to December. The speaker, the duration and intensity of this health crisis remains uncertain. Although there have been recent positive developments on the medical, medical front, the sharp and ongoing revisions to the macroeconomic forecast reduced by various international agencies, including the International Monetary Fund, confirmed the difficulties in developing firm macroeconomic forecasts. As members would be aware, the important and necessary policy measures implemented to effectively manage the public health emergency exerted significant pressure on the country's fiscal position. While we expect reopening of tourism on November 1st, to have a growing positive impact on near-term macroeconomic conditions, the government is seeking to make use of the most current information to the extent possible to inform critical policy deliberations. Mr. Speaker, let me reiterate that the government of Bahamas is committed to the highest standards of fiscal transparency and accountability and is taking extra diligence in crafting our strategies for revenue and expenditure. Even amid these unusually volatile times, we will seek to ensure that our forecasts are aligned as closely as possible to our overarching fiscal sustainable sustainability goals. I thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable. Order that the communication be brought up. Order that the communication do lie on the table. Further statements and communications by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Southern Shores. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 